Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Uh, shall we start our class? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, uh, I hope you got all you know previous class videos and all right documents, everyone. Yes, sir. Are you getting every day? Yeah, fine. So if you're not getting, just contact our admin team so that they will share all videos, okay, and documents. Okay. So in our last class, we were trying to understand how to launch Windows instance, okay? Uh, in today's class, we are going to see how to launch Linux instance because being a DevOps engineer, for us, Linux is very, very important. We use Linux a lot, okay? Of course, we use Windows also, but most of the cases we use Linux, okay? Because majority of DevOps tools, they support Linux only, okay? So let's see how to launch Linux instance. Guys, so theory is pretty same, whatever we covered yesterday. You know, that, you know, AMI means operating system, Instance type means CPU and RAM. EBS means hard disk and security groups. Almost same with few differences. Okay, few differences. Okay, fine. So let's do it now. Then only you'll understand. Let me log into my AWS account. And uh, I hope you have created your accounts also, right? Have you created your AWS accounts, everyone? Yes. Yes, I. Okay. Yes. Fine. So if not, uh, please be ready with your accounts. Then only you can practice, right? Yeah. X seven X. So guys, you can choose any region that is up to you. Here you can see these are the regions. You can choose any region that's up to you. So what I do, I choose Singapore region. Whatever region that you select, if you launch any instance, the instance will be physically launched in that particular region. Okay, you can choose any one that is up to you. Okay, I have selected Singapore. Why I did not select Mumbai? Because in Mumbai already I have running servers are there which are related to my other DevOps class, which is already running, okay? So that's why I don't want to disturb that one. I want to show you freshly, that's why I selected Singapore. We can choose Mumbai also, same thing. Now, same, go to services, and you can see EC2, just select that EC2. Okay, so today we are going to launch Linux instance, got it? So same like yesterday. So today also we need to fill all these stages. Total eight stages are there, all those. Today we are going to launch an extension. Okay. Now, here, either you can click here, launch instance, or you can see easy to dashboard, you go to that. Here also you can click, that is up to you. Now here, why it is showing like, you know, one key pair and two uh, security groups, because you remember in our yesterday's class, when we launched a Windows instance, we created one key pair and we selected that security group, right? You know, the default one, which we selected. So one in this one is default, and the one that belongs to our yesterday's class, okay? So you need not to delete them, that's okay. Even, even if you don't delete, no problem at all, that's up to you, okay? Or you want to do it freshly, then what you can do, you can go to key pairs. See, these are one that we created yesterday, right? Select that, actions, delete. Delete, for confirmation, you have to type delete. Okay, now delete. Same like security groups also, you can see, security groups. In that, this is the default one that you can see. The purpose I'll explain later on. 
and the next one that got created in our yesterday's class okay now same here go to actions here you need to scroll down you can see if you scroll down then at the end you can see security and delete you don't try to delete this default one even if you try hard you can't do it that's a default one that will be there forever okay the purpose of that one i'll explain later on okay yeah now let's go to dashboard and hit refresh hit refresh okay now you can see we don't have anything it's uh, empty okay except one default security group now here click here launch instance and launch click that yeah same like yesterday we need to fill all these stages one by one uh, in yesterday our first step we selected windows operating system but since today we are planning to launch linux instance we have to choose any linux operating system any linux that is up to you you can see amazon linux is there mac os is there red hat linux is there suze linux ubuntu you know right these are flavors of linux right you can choose any one that is up to you but make sure that free tier eligibility tag is there okay so i would like to go with amazon linux any linux but just worried about free tier yeah that is a right happily you can click here again guys here as i said all these things why they have mentioned these things all these things upcoming classes we are going to discuss okay these one everything all these things okay so as of now you just click here select choose select operating system and click on select yeah okay so i have selected amazon linux amazon linux then coming to second step we need to choose instance type okay instance type means cpu and ram okay they are giving like a group same like yesterday already we covered yesterday right cpu and ram they are giving as a group you can choose any one that is up to you but uh, same i want you to go with a free tab that is t2 micro where you are getting one cpu per and one gb of ram okay just select that one and next T2 micro. Where I'm getting one CPU, one GB of RAM. Okay. Then coming to third step, number of instances. You can choose as many that you want. Uh, yeah. Yesterday we selected only one instance, right? Today let's go with the two. Okay. If you can launch two, you can launch any number of instances, right? Uh, I would like to go with the two. You can see. Two instances. Okay. Now click here next. Again, I told you right. Other options. Those are not related to today's class. Now click next. Number of instances two. So here each instance will take one CPU core, one GB of RAM. It's not like shared one. Like you know, uh, half GB of RAM in for one instance, remaining half for another. No. Let you you can use two hundred any number. So each instance will have one CPU core and one GB of RAM. That is okay. Yeah. Then coming to storage, I told you right yesterday they were you know for Windows it was taking thirty GB, right? But Linux it is taking only eight GB. Why? Because Linux operating system is considered as a lightweight operating system. Lightweight operating system. Okay, that's why it is. They are taking only. They are giving only eight GB. Eight GB is more than enough. Why Linux operating system consumes less space? That you'll understand in Linux class. Because after AWS, immediately we are going to start with Linux. So in the first class of Linux, I'm going to explain the actual differences between Windows and Linux. Okay, what are the advantages that we are getting in Linux? Because see, Linux is uh, uh, pretty useful. You know, compared to Windows. Linux is very useful in terms of many things. Like Linux is secure, Windows is not so secure. Linux is free, Windows is not free. Linux, you know, uh, it is uh, secure means in terms of hacker, in terms of virus, but Windows is not so secure. And uh, Linux is multi-user, multi-task. Like like many advantages are there that you know we get in Linux. Okay, and one example, it consumes less space. So why it you know these many advantages are there? Those we are going to discuss in our first class of Linux after AWS. Okay, 
So here it is as of right, it is taking only 8 GB. That is pretty fine. Uh, in that 8 GB, 4 GB will be consumed for OS. Remaining 4 GB you can utilize for yourselves. That's a free that you can use. And you know that free tire is up to 30 GB. Up to 30 GB. So here we are launching two instances. Each instance will have 8 GB hard disk. Correct. So 8 plus 8. That is 16. So free tire is up to 30 GB, correct? So 30 GB. That means you have still 14 GB that you can use. Either you can increase or you can add one more drive. That is up to you. So you can launch any number of instances, but overall it should not go above 30. Okay, if you want to be in free time, you might be thinking, so if it, if it is the case, then we can't launch more than three to four instances. Yeah, that's right. Because if you launch three instances, it will take one more 8 GB, 24. If you launch one more instance, four, four eight, 32. But 30 only free, that means you are going out of free to 2 GB. So if you can launch Linux, you can launch only three at a time. No, when at a time. If it is Windows, you can launch only one. Okay, that's what free tier. But but don't worry, we have extended free tier. Is extended? that we'll be discussing later on, okay. As of now, you just practice with two only, whatever I'm showing, okay. So I will launch it too. Uh, so we are completely in free time, okay. Yeah. Now that's it, click here next. Your root drive. In Windows we call C drive, in Linux we call root drive. Root drive, AGB, right. Then after that, Tags coming to tag. Tag means same, same like yesterday, giving some meaningful name to your instance. So you can give whatever name that you want. Here you can see click to add a name tag. Just click that. And you give whatever name that you want. Uh, oh, I'll give my lens. See here, both instances will take the same name. Very, very important. Both instances will take the same name. Okay. Here you can't give, you know, different names for different senses here. Here both will take the same name. But later on, we'll get an option from where we can change the name. Later on, we can change. That I'll tell you from where we can change. Okay. Uh, yeah. Click next. My lens. Then after that, come into security groups. Same like yesterday. No difference. Uh, let me repeat once again. So that's a kind of quick recap. Security group, it deals with ports. Port is a port is a, like, a, like a door to your instance. You have a room, room is having doors, right? In the same manner, every instance or server will have ports. As I already said, we have 0 to 655, These many ports are there. Every instance will have these many ports are there. And uh, each and every port they have dedicated for some special purpose. Okay. And for every port, we have both incoming as well as outgoing. Both doors are there. Right? So yesterday, what actually we did, see, I told you, right? Here, you need not remember all these ports. All are not important. Few ports are very, very important. Those are 3389, 22, 443. But in fact, you need not remember these numbers also. Since we can't remember numbers, that's why they have a certain tag. That is here we call RDP. This is SH. This is HTTP. This we call HTTPS. So you don't remember these numbers. Just remember these tags. They are more than enough. Got it? Now what actually we did yesterday? Yesterday we launched a Windows instance. And it was my laptop. Right? We opened a port called RDP because RDP is a dedicated port for Windows. So that we, we were able to access that Windows server. But today's scenario is something different. What, what we are doing today, we are, today we are launching Linux instance, right, which is in Singapore region. And my laptop is there, which is in Pune. Now we have to open one port, right? If it is Linux instance, blindly remember one thing that you have to open SSH. Just mug it up, SSH port. You have to open SSH only. Windows, RDP is for Windows. SH is for Linux. RDP means remote desktop protocol. SH means secure shell. Secure shell. So the port 
that you are going to open is as such. That's a mug it up. That's it. So board number is 22. You need not remove our board number. Got it? So one thing is pretty clear that today we need to open a port called as such. But you need not open, guys. See, already they are opening by themselves. Why? Because, why? Because we, we selected Linux OS. Correct? They know that Linux means SSH only. That's why by default they are opening SSH. Right? And the port number is 22. That is so. So, what is this protocol? TCP, UDP, IP address, all these things we are going to discuss in network class. Okay. Optionally, what you can do? Optionally, you can give any name here, security group name. That's up to you, not mandatory. I'll give Linux security group. Any description you can give, any description that's up to you. I'll give Linux security. And this is not mandatory. That's why yesterday we did not touch this one. Not mandatory. Yeah, that's it. That means today also we are not doing anything here. So click here, review and launch. Here, security group. SH. Then finally, you know, review stage. And same like yesterday, today it is showing one warning that, hey, Sai, your security group is open to the world. That's okay, no problem. You know, uh, as of now, we don't have any secure content. In upcoming class, we are going to see how, you know, we are going to provide security. Okay. So as of now, you can ignore this warning and you just verify whatever OS that you selected, instance type, security groups, you know, all these things. If you wish to change at this stage, you can change or if you don't want to change, that's okay. Just click here, launch. Launch. So here, launch. Then finally, same like yesterday, we need to deal with key pair. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll do it. Guys, before that, just please respond everyone. Are you understanding? Everyone, please respond. Yes, sir. Yes, yes right? sir. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Sir. One question, guys. Uh, better is it fine if I take questions at the end of class? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So here, select an existing key pair or create a new key pair. Same like yesterday. No difference. So what we'll do today also we are going to create a new key pair. In upcoming classes, we'll make use of existing key pair. Here you can see here. Either you can select an existing key pair or you can create a new key pair. Or you can proceed without a key also. But since we are at the beginning, you know, beginning stage, let's create a new key pair. Okay. Create a new key pair. And you can give whatever name that you want. Okay. Yesterday I think we had even five windows, right? Okay. Today date is six. Uh, and today I'm launching Linux, right? Today six Linux. Whatever name that is up to you. Okay, six Linux. You cannot launch instance, right? Because first you have to download key pair. So just click that. Yes, you have downloaded key pair. That's it. Launch instance. Done. Okay. See, we launch two instance, right? That's why you can see two IDs. One, two. That is sub -rose. And here you can see six Linux dot pem. Privacy enhanced mail. That's the format that they're doing. These also same. These are just a file having some content. You can see, let me open it up. What is this? This is a file having some content, nothing more than that. Okay, now view inst instances. That's it. So here, keep a six Linux dot pen, right? Six lines dot pen. So today also today they are giving pen. Just remember that. Yeah, I told you that we we launch it two instances. That's why you can see two. If I had given some two thousand, you would have seen two thousand instances. So that kind of flexibility is there in cloud. That's the reason everyone is going with cloud. Okay, within fraction of seconds. Now the problem with these two instances is both are having same name. Same name. So what I want to, I'd like to change the name of these instances. So I'll convert like, you know, my Linux one and my Linux two. See here, you can see this, this particular tag is right. Okay. Let me, yeah. When you move your cursor on top of this name, you can see, yeah, this symbol you can see, right? Just click that. Now here you can change the name. Just I'll make it as my Linux one and this one, click that. My Linux two. That's it. Easy. Now these are two different. Guys, these are completely two different instances. 
having different IDs, different IP addresses, different DNS names. There is no relation between these two. Only similarities, both are having similar kind of configuration, similar kind of. Apart from that, these are completely two different, inst different instances which are running differently. Okay, there is no relation. Okay. Okay, now let's try to access this instance. So to access what I'll do, let me compare with yesterday's class, what actually we did yesterday, so that you'll understand. Easily. See, yesterday, uh, we launched Windows, right? Where in Singapore. Today, we launched Linux where in Singapore. Yesterday, this was my laptop. In Pune, today also same thing. This is my laptop. Which is in Pune. Yesterday, we opened ports called RD. Today, we are opening, we, we opened ports called SSH. Got it? Fine. Now, what we'll do, see, uh, yesterday, yesterday, say what we did. We have entered DNS name, username. Password of Windows instance, correct? So where we entered all these things? We entered these things in one application called remote desktop connection. We entered all these things in remote desktop connection. But today also we are going to do this kind of same, no different. See yesterday they were giving PEM key. Today also they are giving PEM only, right? You can see the, this is our, okay, PEM key. Now, uh, today also we are going to enter same thing, DNS name, username, but today you can't enter password, you cannot enter, okay, password, because password is to access Windows, today we are going to enter the same key, the water key they are giving, right, the same key, but we need to change the format of that key, just we need to change format of that key, they are giving PEM key, we need to convert into PPK. PPK. We need to convert to PPK. See, yesterday, okay, where you entered all these, I'll tell you how to convert. Yesterday, we entered those things in remote desktop connection application here. But today, we are going to enter in one application called Putti. 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 Okay. Uh, just one minute, let me have some water. Okay, fine. So yesterday we entered all those things in remote desktop connection application. Today we are going to enter all these things in one application called Putty. So, so here to access Windows instance, you need RD remote desktop connection application. To access Linux instance, you need Putty too. Okay. See, remote desktop connection application, it supports password. This application supports password in the same manner. Putti supports PPK file. Putti supports PPK. What is PPK? Putti private key. I'm repeating. Putti private key. So, Putti no, tool supports PPK format only. Okay. Yesterday, we converted PEM to password how AWS has given one option. But today, we need to convert PEM to PPK. But AWS is not giving any option. That's why we need to we need to use one more tool to convert PEM to PPK. That is Putty Gen. Putty Gen. So we use one more. Tool. You might be thinking, so yesterday we converted PEM to password. Today you are converting PEM to PPK. First of all, 
Why are they giving this PEM file? What is the use of PEM? Where do we use this file without any conversion? That we will understand later on. Because see, if my la laptop is also Linux, if my laptop also Linux, and destination also Linux, then we use PEM file as it is. But our laptops are Windows, right? That is the reason we are converting like this. Later on, in our DevOps classes, we are going to launch multiple Linux instances. Then to access from one instance to another instance, we use PEM file as it is that you will understand later on. Okay. But as of now, we need two external tools. What are those? One is Putty, <coughs> and the one is Putty Gen. So Putty Gen, we used to convert PEM to PPK. Putty we use, Putty we use in which we enter DNS stream user and PPK file. That is so. Right? Okay. So now let's do it. Let's do it. We are going to download and install these two tools. Simple guys, go to Google and here you type putty, putty and putty gen, putty and putty gen. Now enter. Now you don't even look at this one, blindly go with the first website, the first one. You can see chr.gnn.org.uk, blindly go to the first one. Just click that. Now when you click on that one, if you scroll down, yeah, you can see here. Putty.exe, correct? Putty.exe, that is 64 bit. Okay. Yeah, so they have start, I think they have given this new one. Yeah, what do you do? See, putty.exe 64 bit. This is on putty.exe. X86 is right. You select this one. So when you click this one, that will be downloaded. And same here you can see putty gen.exe. So you need to click on this one, 64 bit x86. So that these two tools will be downloaded. Okay. Let me show you. Let me download. See, just click one click. That's it. You can see put it on X. They are lightweight tools, guys. And scroll down. Here you can see put it gen dot exe. Just one click. Put it gen dot exe. This also will be downloaded. That's it. These two lightweight tools. Fine. Now what you do? Just go to that location in downloads folder just cut them and you keep in your desktop so that you can access easily okay yeah see here one is putty gen the other one is putty now first thing what we are going to do we are going to open putty gen tool putty gen we are going to upload the pem file whatever already we downloaded that we are going to convert into ppk file that we are going to convert into PPK file. Guys, please don't mind. I think the, you, have, you might be getting some distress from my side. <laughs> so people there, you know, one of you know, someone is celebrating birthday today. So are you getting any disturbance from my side today? Guys, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhat we are getting Lala, yeah, like a little bit, right? Please ignore that one. That's uh, celebrating birthday. And every every day you don't. <laughs> At this one, is it quite noisy? Is it, I mean, is it disturbing or is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's yeah. acceptable. Okay. Yeah, fine. fine. So sometimes it is not audible. Acha, okay, okay. So I'll make sure to, uh, tomorrow onwards we'll, we'll, we'll have. I didn't know breaking. after. Sir, sir, oh. sir, voice breaking. Voice sometimes breaking. Voice breaking. Yes, sir. I don't think so, guys. Is it same for everyone? Voice breaking from my yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clear. No, fine. no right. Okay, no. it's clear. Clear, clear, right? Guys, uh, clear. check from your end. Uh, the one who is facing voice issue, check from your end. There could be net issue from your side. Okay. So I, I promise you tomorrow much you won't get these disturbances. Okay. Yeah, I'll switch to some other. Okay. Yeah, fine. Now, so first we are going to open Putty Gen 2. We are going to upload PEM file. We are going to convert into PPK. Okay. So open Putty Gen. Okay. Now here, here you can see load. Two options you can see, generate and load. You have to click on load. We are not going to generate any key. We are going to load existing PEM key. Okay, so click here, load and go to downloads. If you don't find that file here, what you do here, you need to click on all files. Okay, now click here, six lines. See, as per the diagram, we are going to load existing PEM file that we are going to convert into PPK, right? 
So here, see, 6 ln x, this is PEM file. Just open. Now what they are asking here, they are asking to see it. You need to use the save private key command. That's what they are saying. Correct? Okay. So click OK. And which one? Save public key or save private key? We need to click on save private key command. I'll, I'll tell you. Let me draw a diagram so that you can understand. See here. This is a file, PEM file. Dot PEM file. Which is having some content. This is there in my downloads folder. Done. Now, this one we are converting into ppk. Dot ppk. When you convert, you know, it, this one, one copy will be created and that will be converted. Okay. So, here you need to click on save private key because it is putty private key, not public key. Putty private key, ppk. So, that's why you need to click on save private key. Click that. What they are saying here, they are saying that are you sure you want to save this key without a fast phrase? That means they are saying that, Sai, whatever file you are converting, right? For that, if you have, you can have one extra layer of protection in the form of fast phrase or password, you can call. So that no one should open this PPK file. Okay, no one should open. Uh, that's okay. I don't want any extra fast phrases as of now. That's why I'm going to select yes. I'm going to click on yes. Okay, that means see here. Are you sure you want to save this key without a fast phrase? Yes, I am sure that. I want to say this key without a fast phrase. That means I don't want any fast phrases or passwords. Just click here, yes. That means I don't want this extra protection. Now you have converted the file, but where do you want to save this one? I would like to save this one in my desktop or wherever you want it, that you can give the location. So I'll select desktop. And for this, you can give any name, any name that you want. Uh, you, let's give same name. That's okay because formats are different, right? I'll give six Linux or if you want, you can change the name. That's okay. Six Linux and the format is PPK. Now click on save and close. You can see six Linux. This is that PPK file. If you want, you can verify. Right click, go to properties. You can see it is dot PPK file. You can see. Got it? PPK. So that is how we convert PEM to PPK file. Okay, your PEM file is here in my download. See, let me show you. In my downloads, you can see six Linux. The PEM, these are PEM file. Whatever is there in my desktop, that is a PPK file. Okay, fine. I have converted the key. Then what is the next step? The next step is we need to open Putty, in which we need to enter DNS name username and that converted ppk file right so open putty yeah now what we'll do let's try to go with uh, uh we'll, we'll go inside our first instance the first one okay now here you'll get an option to connect you can say connect click on connect now here you can say ssh client so click on ssh client ssh client then under example box under example, ignore this part till here. This is your username. EC driven user. At the rate, this is DNS name. This is username, this is DNS name. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy both in one go. Username at the rate, DNS name. So here, copy the whole thing. Username at the rate, DNS name. Just copy that. And in this putty box, you can see paste here. So here in one go, I have entered username and DNS name both. Now only thing I need to upload is PPK file. So let's upload PPK file. So here you can see SH. Don't click on SH. You can see just beside SH, you'll get one plus symbol, right? right? Just click on that plus symbol. Then here you can see AUTH authentication. Now don't click on plus. Now click on top of AUTH authentication. Okay. So here you can see browse. So browser which file? The PPK file which is there in your desktop. There you can see six Linux dot PPK. Now open and click on. 
That's it. So it is asking for some security certificate. Just click here, accept. That's it. Where are you now? Where are you? You are inside Linux instance. Linux, you don't get graphical. It's only command line. You don't find any graphical. See, in Windows, you can see this is a graphical part. Okay, let me show you. So we'll see. This is in Linux Windows, you can see graph, graphical means colors, all these things. In Linux, graphical is a command line also. If you want to see command line, here you type CMD. This is Linux, Windows command prompt. Windows command prompt. And this is Windows graphical. But in Linux, you don't find any graphical thing. We have only command line. That also I'll tell you why it is so. Why they are not giving any graphical thing. That also I'll tell you. Because, you know, uh, there are so many advantages if we get only command line. That I'll be explaining in Linux class. Okay. So, yeah, that's it pretty much. Where are we now? We are inside EC2, Amazon Linux. This is what EC2. We are inside your Linux instance. Got it? That's it. Don't worry about this one. Command prompt, these commands and all. I am not having any command as of now. Today we learned just how to launch and how to access Linux instance. Later on when I explain Linux, that time you'll, you'll play with commands, trust me. Okay, so it's very easy. Now what we'll do, let's try to access second instance also. Second instance. So how to access second instance? Observe carefully here. See, this PEM file is same for both instances. Correct? This PEM file is common for both. And that already we converted to PPK. That PEM file we converted to PPK. That means we can use same PPK file to access second instance also. Got it? So you need not to convert again and again. So to access second instance, I need one more putty tool. So that case, what you do, you just click on this top white color is right. Right click and you can see new session. When you click on new session, yes, you can see one more putty. Okay. Now, Select second instance. Here you can see, click on connect. Connect. It seems uh, celebrations are over. <laughs> okay. So here, same. You can see username at the DNS. Now you might be thinking, sir, username is also same. That uh, file also, PPK file also same. But DNS name is different. If you want, you can verify. DNS name will be different. Okay. We can change all these things. That anyways, we are going to do in our upcoming classes. As of now, copy username address DNS name and paste here. Then same SH authentication and browse for that same file, you know, PPK file, which already we converted. Open. Uh, what we can do, we can change the color. Okay. If you want to change the color, the font color and all, click on colors. Here, colors. Click here, both. Both means what? Front and back. Font color and background color. Use system color means system is having some default colors. System will have some default colors. It will use that. Yeah, that's it. Open. Yeah, so same. It is asking for you know for some security certificates. Just click here. Yes. That's it. I'm inside my second Linux instance. Let me give these two side by side. This is first one. This is second one. So these are completely two different instances having different DNS names, different IP addresses, different IDs, but only similarities, both are having similar kind of configuration. Well, that is also having 2GB, 1GB RAM, these are also having 1GB RAM. That is also having 8GB hard disk, these are also having 8GB. That is the only similarity. Apart from that, these two are completely two different. You can see here 21-141, but here 29-121. They are completely two different instances. And you can work happily here. Okay, you can work. So the real-time use case is same whatever we covered yesterday. Mainly, being a DevOps guy, we use Linux a lot because in these only we are going to install DevOps tools and we are going to use. Okay, so and also mainly web servers in companies, websites, web servers, all those running on Linux only, not Windows, because Linux is pretty secure, and many advantages that we are getting. So that's the reason you must know how to launch. So today. I did not explain how to practice commands and or what is this and alone. Today we learned only how to launch Linux instance and how to access. You practice that much. Don't worry about how to deal with Linux. But after AWS, we have detailed classes there. There I will explain from zero level. Trust me, after, by the end of this course, DevOps course, 
you will play with Linux commands. That I can promise you. You'll play. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So once you finish your work, once you finish your work, same thing. What you do? You you can select all in one go. You can see. If you click that, all will be selected. And uh, yeah, you can if you want to stop or terminate. That's up to you. See, instant state. And as I said, if you stop, you can start again. Uh, after installing software, generally we go for reboot. If you terminate, you are going to lose them forever. Same like yesterday. There is no difference. So in our DevOps class, what actually we do? Uh, we after launching, we stop so that next day again we can use it. We can start. Let me show you one simple example. See, this is Singapore, right? Let me take you to Mumbai region. Mumbai, right click, open. So as I said, in Mumbai region, already I have some running servers out there, you can see. In morning DevOps class, one tool which is going on, that is Ansible. Okay, morning DevOps right. So Ansible server and three more. So total, I launched three instances. See, they are in stopped state. Because today morning I stopped after finishing my class. Tomorrow morning, again, I'm going to start. That's it. So that is how actually we do in our companies, okay. But today, coming to this one, our instances, so after this, I don't need them anymore. That's how I'm going to terminate. Got it? Simple. That is how we launch Linux instance. Guys, there are two more ways through which we can access. Today, we have seen putty and putty gen. Putty and putty gen today. But in next classes, we are going to see two more ways. One is through browser. And next one is MOBA extra. MOBA extra. That we are going to see in our upcoming classes. Okay. Yeah, that's it uh, for today. That is how we launch Linux instance. And um, today you'll get, uh, you don't get any theory document because theory already I have shared yesterday, the same theory for this house. There won't be any difference. So today you'll get one recorded video along with uh, one uh, PDF document that is our lab session. What are options we selected and all it. So today one video, one PDF document. Okay. Yeah, that's it from my side. Uh, those who don't have any doubts, you can leave the session. Those who are having doubts, please stay back now. I'll clarify all your doubts. Okay. Fine. So, guys, before I you know start your doubts, uh, tell me one thing you understood today's class, everyone. Yes, sir. Understood clearly. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes so I want you to practice this one, guys, because see, listening class is different. Practice is different. If you don't practice then you know things won't be clear even you listen 100 times no if you practice once then you'll remember easy got it so don't worry in every class of our you know we, uh, devops we launch mini linux instances okay but just practice so that you know you'll understand the things yeah yeah so if you have any doubts you can go ahead with your doubts hello sorry yes please yeah actually how we can provide the password for this linux yeah uh, yeah, we can do that. That's what we are going to discuss in Linux class. In Linux class, we are going to talk about user administration. There I'll tell you how to create users, how to create groups, how to set passwords, how to change permissions. So big, big class is it. Okay, we are going to discuss all those. Things. Complete user administration part. Like how many sessions will be on Linux? See, initially, a Linux sessions will be around some five to six. Okay. So that we can start our DevOps. Once we okay. start a DevOps, in every class of DevOps, there are so many places where Linux and AWS are integrated, involved. Understood, right? Okay. So that is, that yeah, is. like why I'm worrying like I'm zero level at Linux. <laughs> See, I, I know, I know guys, most of you are from non it I know that one, don't worry. So you are understanding, yes, you understood yesterday's class, today's class, right? Yes, yes. Every class will be in the same manner. Got it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, like uh, while uh, downloading that uh, key pair, we seeing two options, RSA and some other option. What yeah. is that exactly? Yeah, actually, see, these are two different options. We, I, I, I'm planning to explain later on. Uh, these are types of keys, types of keys. Uh, they are using some algorithms to create that key. Don't worry. That's a, you know, if, uh, that's not today's top catch. That is a upcoming classes okay. we'll discuss. Okay. Okay. One more small doubt. Yes, uh, please. Like, uh, uh, we talked about the different type of ports, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, why are these number of ports like who depend and like uh, what is it exactly that kind of doubt actually like here? See, initially when you know they look, uh, launch a computer first time, that time itself you know they designed in that way. 
Okay. Same. In fact, IP addresses also. We have fixed number of IP addresses. So that is how they design at the beginning, and still the same thing which is running. Okay. Or even Amazon or any Google Cloud is the same. Any. You take right? any instance, any okay. server. These are fixed. Six dollar five three five is the upper limit. That's it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Hello. Uh, you told that in morning you stop the instance. What happens if we don't stop instance and we'll keep that running? Yeah, I'll tell you. See, okay. Anyways, that is there in upcoming class. Since you asked me this one, I'll tell you now. Uh, just be be in here. I'll tell you. Be in here. Coming to free data eligibility, you can run one instance. One instance. See. Uh, Free data eligibility they have given for OS instance type hard disk and all, but till now I did not explain how many number of instances you can run. For that also there is a limit. It's not like you know you you are running hundreds of instances. No, see you can run one instance continuously for seven fifty hours per month. In one month, you can run for seven fifty hours. Like till one year, every month. This month you can run for seven fifty hours. Next month seven fifty hours like that. So, but if you are running three instances, three instances, okay. So seven fifty by three. That means two fifty hours per month. Okay. If you are running seventy five instances, seven fifty by seventy five, ten hours per month. So you can run any number of instances, but make sure that overall count number of hours should not exceed seven fifty. This is with respect to number of instances that you are running. Number of instances. Okay, after that it will be chargeable. Yes, yes. If you cross that seven fifty hours, it will be charged. Uh, and uh, this R will count with whatever just since this is running the my Linux one and two. The data R will also count. Yes. So if they are running, then only they will count these hours. If you stop or terminate, they won't count. So, but even if you stop, and from they where won't. I will calculate the time? Yeah. So we have a no. They will get frequent mails and all. There is one separate class that is for billing and all. Okay. There I will explain clearly that how actually we get bill and all, uh, how to reduce that bill in companies, how actually we manage the bill. So separate session is there. There I am going to explain that. Separate billing section is there. Here you can see. Uh, here, in this, if you click this drop down, you can see my billing dashboard. Correct? This one. Yes. Yeah. There we are going to discuss. But as of now, you don't worry. You just you know whatever we are discussing, right? you practice that one. So in our there in that section, billing section, you'll understand everything clearly. Okay. I want you. You, you won't get any bill. That is for sure. Because extended free data is it? But whatever we are launching, right? You practice that way. You launch two. What if you want to practice again? What you do? What do you do? First, you terminate these two, either stop or terminate. Then again, you practice like that. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Sir, when are you going to start a Linux class, sir? Uh, this today is all right. AWS. Then after that, we have a few topics in AWS. Then uh, actually, I have complete. Actually, oh, yeah. I have completed a AWS course in this. थैंक Yes, I have one thing. This class, please. Yeah, I can see the dates. Like uh, every day, we have classes. Oh, yeah. Weekly five days. Yes. Yeah. 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 Weekly five days. Uh, if at all, if we generally, if we get any holiday in weekday days, that I'll compensate on weekends. That's also that you know we can finish our course as per the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I take weekends also. Sometimes. Yeah, I thought like it's five days, but I can see in the calendar it's around seven days. Yeah, that's all. so we can generally we don't have classes, but you know some class I take based on the topic because after few topics I can't give break. Yes. Otherwise you'll miss a continuity. Okay. Okay. So that that's. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Like one thing. 
Yeah, please. Hello. Yes, yeah. Please. Um, let's say if I mean if we have two instances for, from Windows. Let's say the first one is 30 GB, and then the second one also is 30 GB. So I mean, like we we created two and then running right now. So is it like is, is it like considered like chargeable one or like still considered as a free free tier? Because you said 30 GB is the maximum we can run at yes. one shot, right? See this one. What you can run any number of instances. That means 750 hours is right. Uh -huh. month. That is with respect to T2 micro, that CPU and RAM. Okay. And OS, AMI. Okay. So you can take this. That's all. You can run any number of instances. Okay. Per month, you can use these things for 750 hours per month. With respect to only AMI and T2. How about but, the size? But the hard disk, no, hard disk, that's a 30 only. As you said, if you launch two Windows instances, yeah. if you launch two, you are in free tier with respect to AMI and T2 micro in CPU and RAM. But you are going out of free tier with respect to EBS. So you'll get, you know, bill for that uh, hard disk. Bit confusing, right? Uh, yeah, a bit confusing. Yeah, I do understand. Don't worry, don't worry. Actually, we have a detailed class. Is it better? That's why you know I don't want to explain this one now. We have detailed class. Let me explain there only because I need to add many more things so that you'll get better class. Understood? Uh, is that fine? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. Actually, see guys, see, if I am don't think that I'm skipping your doubts because there are some dependencies out there. To explain few things, I need to explain few more things. Okay, so that's why I'm following in a sequence order. So whatever some doubts when I say, hey, well, I, I'll explain later. I will explain at the right time. But it, I mean, at least now what we understand is like, well, it's better to go with one instance at a time. Lah. You see what you can do. You can practice today. Yesterday you practice one Windows to yes. turn it. Today you practice two Linux instances. No problem. I mean, whatever I'm showing, right? You practice those things only. Okay, later okay. on when you get to know about this free tier and all completely, then you can play with all these things. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So in today's session, like we created two instances, then we renamed by my line is one and two. Mm. If in case thousand instances, of course, mm. uh, there is no free tier, okay. But so support how? thousand are there. Is there any shortcut to rename? Or? No, no. See, that is not okay. actually real time scenario. Real time, okay. we don't know thousands of instances in one go. In real time. Today we launch it three, tomorrow two, like that, you know, in a set wise. We don't, you know, Jeff, you can say that, Sai, what if we launch a thousand? For saying that is easy, but that won't happen in real time. Understand? Okay. okay. The team says RT. Yeah. yeah. So, and also this is only one time effort, renaming. Okay. That's why there won't be any issue. When we launch two to three instances, immediately we rename them. Those will be forever only. We don't change the names. Okay. okay. So Perfect. that's okay. Yeah, coming. Answer to your question is, you have to change here manually one by one only. Only you don't have it. Okay. Right? Yeah. Any more doubts? Any more doubts? Please, please go ahead with your doubts. Hi, Sai. Yes, please. So in Linux servers, we have launched two instances, right? Right. So those two instances will use two different users or one user? Uh, no, no, no. That is not the case actually. That uh, 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 see, wait, wait. That that you know that's not actual today's one. Later on, we will create user accounts and all. I'll tell you. I actually haven't. Suppose you launch two servers. Assume that these are my web servers. Assume these are my web servers. So some people they want to access like uh, mainly DevOps units. You need to access these servers. Okay, so you are going to access all web servers. There are some web designing team, web designing team. They want to modify website. So they will access all instances, data, database administrators. Assume that in the database also I have installed. So they will access all these instances. That means many people that access these instances, many people. Okay, so how things work, how they are going to access, how we are going to create user accounts. That part we are going to see when we talk about Linux class and all, administration and all, there you will understand. In fact, in DevOps class also, we are going to discuss all those things. Got it? Thank you, Zay. Got it. Okay. 
Now let me show you how to terminate. That already you know, right? Just what you do. Uh, select both and uh, instant state and terminate and terminate. That's it. I've terminated these two. So you can't start again. Okay. So after practicing, you better you terminate. Okay. Don't keep them in running mode. I mean, That's we have 70, 50 hours are there, but better you terminate. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. Sir, last doubt, sir. Sir, can we terminate the instance through CLI? Yes, yes, yes. yes, we can do that. AWS command line is there. that also is it? Yeah, that is an option, is it? Not yeah, okay. thank you, sir. That's it. Sir, hmm. uh, why, why use RDP for Windows and SSH for Linux? That is how they design. That is how when Microsoft company, when they created that OS, they have given their particular application, RDP. Okay. For Linux, we have two to three, the external company they have designed. That is how it is. Okay. That is how they design. Okay. Why we can't use uh, HTTP and HTTPS for Linux? Are you, no, no, these are ports. Achha, see, are you talking about tools or ports? This RDP port, you know, today. Yes, uh, it's a uh, port. Achha, you're talking about ports, right? Yes, yes, we are going to use. Yes. RDP is a dedicated port for Windows. That is how they design, you know. SH is dedicated for Linux. Those are fixed. But later on, we are going to convert them into web servers. That means, that means uh, sir, we wait, can wait. change that. These things you can't change. RDP and SH. Later on, we'll convert them into web servers, either Windows or Linux. When we convert them into a web servers, that time we are going to open one more port that is HTTP and HTTPS. That, that is it in next class. Uh, in next to next class is web server only. There I'm going to explain how to deal with HTTP and HTTPS ports. But one thing is clear that for Windows RDP only, for Linux SH only. Apart from that, in both both machines, we use HTTP and HTTPS. Okay. Sir, uh, one uh, mm. that dot pm and uh, dot ppk. Sir, mm. uh, what is the difference uh, between pp pm and ppk? So abbreviation difference is one is privacy enhanced mail. Ppk means put the private key. That's the abbreviation. The difference. Sir, uh, literally, there, there uh, we use uh, password. Where, see, window in the window we use password. In window we use password, right? Yes. Uh, in Linux we use yes, PPK. PPK, right? Yes. Why? Because these are this tool supports password. This tool supports PPK only. That is how they they have designed the companies. They have the design the tools, right? That is how they design. Got it? Later on in Linux also, we will explain, I will explain how to design, how to create passwords. Linux also, we can deal with password that we are going to see. And actually, till launch, uh, Linux server launch till oh. two, two instances is easy. After that, I actually, I am uh, uh, confused uh, what after, after that. Uh, don't worry. See, you are getting recorded video, right? Yes, Correct. You go through slowly, slowly you go through. Twice, thrice, you know, till you get perfection. Don't worry, in upcoming class also, we are going to use again and again. So don't worry. If you are not understanding one go, you go through this one slowly, then you will understand. Not a big issue. Okay. Yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you in tomorrow's class. Same time. Okay. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.